In this Moscow, Idaho investigative video, we're going to talk about Moscow, Idaho, the Idaho Four, Brian Koberger, and so much more. Now, without further ado, let's see what I have to say for myself this time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name's Drip Drop, and I'll be your host most of the time, as often as I possibly can, because I know you love me, and I love you too. So, thank you so much for tuning in to this special presentation. Remember on the Brent Kopaka Dispatch audio when they randomly seemed to just mention a no-color 2011 Ford Fiesta? It didn't seem like it had anything to do with anything, and they didn't really have any other follow-up or discussion about it other than just randomly mentioning it. A no-color 2011 Ford Fiesta, 9 of 23. Can you get a hold of the WSP unit on Leita and tell them to come back? So, why didn't they know the color of the no color 2011 Ford Fiesta? I decided to investigate this further. I googled 2011 white Ford Fiesta and look what we found. This car, in my opinion, looks an awful lot like a 2011 Hyundai Elantra. Suspect vehicle number one, two, or three, you choose. Because remember, if there is only one suspect, why would you even put suspect vehicle number one? It implies there has to be a suspect vehicle number two. Common sense. <laughs> they didn't list the crime scene as crime scene number one. No, it's just the crime scene. So it would just be the suspect's car. No, it's suspect vehicle number one. Hmm. Let's compare the 2011 Ford Fiesta to the 2011 Hyundai Elantra, both white. In my opinion, they look so similar. Look at these hubcaps. Very similar. Look at the window shape, similar. Look at the way the body panels are angled. Similar. The tail lights, the headlights, it all looks so similar. And I know some of you out there are car specialists and you will disagree with that. But this is my opinion on my investigative show that you're watching. And I know a lot of people out there will agree with me. These cars look similar. Yeah. So now we did learn that around 837 last night, police received a phone call from actually this apartment complex right behind us. And they didn't tell us who called and they didn't tell us who called. But we do know that a man in his 30s was threatening to harm his roommates. So at that time, police did respond. They were able to get those two roommates out safely. We're told that they're doing fine at this time. But we're also told that a member of the SWAT unit did shoot and kill that 30 year old suspect who was threatening to harm his roommates. Just the fact that during this whole SWAT team incident that they mentioned a no color 2011 Ford Fiesta, it raises a bushy eyebrow. It really does because it makes you wonder, was that Brent's car or a car Brent had access to? We know his mother allegedly owned a 2011 light silver Hyundai Elantra, but what does this Ford Fiesta have to do with anything? We need to know. We demand to know. A no color 2011 Ford Fiesta, nine of 23. If you've got any theories down there, was this Ford Fiesta a DoorDash delivery car? Were they just confused on exactly what the make and model was if they didn't even know what the color was? Maybe they thought it was a Ford Fiesta, but it actually ended up being a Hyundai Elantra. People misidentify vehicles all the time, and that may have been what happened here. There's still a lot of questions and a lot of discrepancies with what we've been told, and you know that's true, and that's probably why you're tuned into this episode right now, because you're fiending for more information. You crave to know what happened in this crime. And rest assured, I'm never stopping the investigation into this crime. Even if there's a conviction, my investigation will only go deeper because I've seen a lot of shady things go down in the courtroom. Yeah, yeah I have. And now let's go right into the next segment of the show, the 911 call. We've talked about it previously and we need to talk about it again. They've told us that the Brent Kopaka situation is a closed case, but they won't give up the public records. For a closed case where there's allegedly no victims and the alleged perpetrator is passed away, what's the secret? 
They say they don't even know who called 911. Do we know who the initial call came from? No. What? Do we know who the initial call came from? No. Oh my God. So they allegedly received an anonymous 911 call, showed up to this man's apartment and passed him away. Bye bye forever. Did he make it to heaven? Hopefully because he was a purple hearted soldier that served the United States of America. Shout out to the USA. We love you and we appreciate you. Thank you for your service. So what secrets does that 911 call hold? If there even was a 911 call, you know that's a possibility. 911, what's your emergency? Because how could you release something that doesn't even exist? There was talk of a search warrant on the body camera footage. Maybe they were led to believe there was something inside of that apartment that they wanted to find in connection to the 1122 King Road crime that happened on November 13th, 2022. King Road, Queen Road, who knows really what the address is. But we know a crime happened at that house. The little house of horrors with the boarded up windows. Isn't it logical for us to just ask questions? For us to need to know, we, the public. Also, we have another coincidence for some of you doubters out there. Remember I told you I revealed the possible tunnels and then the FBI went into the house 24 hours later after my video and some of you doubted? Well, here we go again. Within 12 hours of my Brent Kopaka special, the Pullman prosecution made a statement saying no officer has done any wrongdoing in this case. Okie dokie, Smokey, reveal the 911 call, please. We'd love to hear it. We're not accusing anybody of doing any wrongdoing. We'd just really like to hear the 911 call. We, the public, have a right to hear it. Every 911 call gets released, especially in closed cases because they're paid for by tax dollars of the United States citizens. Which brings us to the Moscow, Idaho crime. Why haven't they released the 911 call? When was the 911 call placed, if it was ever even placed? I've heard rumors that it was Kaylee calling 911 at about 3 a.m. after she couldn't get a hold of Jack Decor. Allegedly, possibly after she couldn't get a hold of Jack Decor, the police didn't show up to the crime scene because they were busy in the band field in front of the fraternity houses harassing underage drinkers. You guys taking off on me? I didn't hear you. Yeah, we thought you were talking. You all yeah. three turned around and I pointed my flashlight and you said, hey, come here. You guys all turned around and walked away. I thought it was just like a fake person, honestly. Yeah. Like, how many, how many fake people are out here <laughs> that you've experienced? Or something, so I'm trying to yeah, yeah. Okay. An empty band field in front of fraternity houses in between fraternity apartments. Crime of the century on the weekend. Oh my God. Wow. God forbid those boys have some fun on the weekend after studying hard. Yeah. Where's the 911 call? Does it exist? Did Kaylee call 911 at 3 a.m. and they failed to respond? Sounds logical to me. Occlum's razor, right? It's the simplest answer. Kaylee and Maddie were frantically attempting to get a hold of Jack Decor. Not just Kaylee, Maddie was calling too. And maybe that is part of the whole mystery and alleged cover-up in this case, is failure to respond. Because failure to respond is a crime. It's a serious crime. And that would be bad business. Really, really, really bad business. If police failed to respond to a quad passing away. And if Kaylee didn't call 911 at 3 a.m. and Dylan called around noon, it's still a real head scratcher it really makes you wonder, WTF? Why, oh why? How could this happen? Dylan possibly holds some answers in this case. I'm personally not convinced she saw any man with bushy eyebrows. 
Because if she saw his eyebrows, why didn't she report what color eyes he had? How about some facial features? How about, was he holding a knife in his hand? Because if he wasn't holding a knife in his hand, where was the knife? If he allegedly lost his knife sheath in the upstairs bedroom. And keep in mind, knife sheaths go on belts and they don't come off belts unless you want them to come off the belt. You literally have to remove the actual belt to get the knife sheath off. So was he just walking around the house like a ding dong with the knife sheath in his hand? Creeping around a house he's never been inside before? With six vehicles in the driveway? That sounds really scary. And keep in mind, from what they've told us, he would have to pass Dylan Mortensen's room no less than three times. Coming in the house, going up the stairs, coming down the stairs, going to Xana's room, and then leaving Xana's room. He passed that room potentially four times or more. And she even allegedly heard the perpetrator talking, saying something like, It's okay, I'm here to help you. And then allegedly the perpetrator walked right by her bedroom as she was standing in the doorway of her bedroom with her door open. There is no possibility on this planet that the alleged perpetrator did not see Dylan standing in that doorway. If she was standing in that doorway. The hallway is really narrow right there. And there's a step down and a step up. It's a real tripping hazard. If any of you out there have ever been in a house with a step down, that's super dangerous. I've been in one and I tripped multiple times and I knew the step was there. So would some noob entering that weirdly laid out house have any idea? Hmm, no. No, I don't think they do. And I think that would be a real tripping hazard for the perp. And they would have potentially slipped, tripped, and fallen right into Dylan's arms. And I've even been hearing rumors of a third witness. Do we think Dylan might have been a little busy in her bedroom with her boyfriend all night long? The bathroom that Dylan would have been using would have been Xana's bathroom that's in the hallway to Xana's bedroom. There is no way it's possible to stay in your room all night long without coming out for a snack or to use the restroom unless you had everything you needed right in your bedroom with your boyfriend. We don't know. But we do know that they originally told us the roommates lived on the bottom floor. In a case this big, a case this serious, why would they lie to us over and over and over again? Did Dylan even live on the second floor? Or was she living in Kaylee's old bedroom, the master suite? Is that why Murphy was allegedly in that room? With Dylan. We don't know. But this should all be public record. One of our fellow humans is being held in a cage off very, very feathery evidence. This evidence could just float away in the wind with a slight breeze. I personally don't even think the DNA is going to be allowed in trial because you know, you know the DNA is suspicious and not against the defendant. No, 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 no. I really hope there's someone out there watching this video right now that puts in a public records request and anonymously slides me the 911 audio from the Brent Kopaka or the 1122 King Road crime. I'd appreciate that. I'll even give you a shout out if you want. Or you can remain completely anonymous. The choice is yours. But those tapes need to be broadcast to the world. I mean, how crazy is this? It's over a year later from this crime and we don't even know who was in that house that morning. Crazy. We've been told that Ethan's brother was there but we don't know any of the other individuals, who they were, what they did when they got there, or how long that they were in that house. Contaminated crime scene. And there's three unidentified male DNAs in that house. And honestly, you would think there would be hundreds of unidentified males in that house. We've seen from the body cam videos, it was a party house. Don't play gum games with me. I'd rather deal with this as a noise complaint than getting a hold of the Greek council and the Greek board and all of that and the, and the students and playing all these stupid fucking games. Do you, all I, I don't do know, do I don't know what question. Because yeah. I want guarantee us, you there's a lot of underage drinking because they left their alcohol behind. Do you want us to try and get a name or a phone number Please, and we can could. call someone? 
We just need to I, talk I to somebody who lives here, because okay. otherwise I have yeah. to be under the assumption you guys are unlawfully entered because no one who lives here is here. Okay. Right? We'll, we'll go. We'll so go I need to verify number. that there was a party here. We'll, go, everyone laughs, we'll go get so a phone number. Those girls like the party, and they liked their fraternity boys a lot. Anyways, anyways, lots and lots and lots more booms coming soon. And you know, these 911 calls hold some exclusive booms, possibly even exculpatory. And I promise not a day goes by that I'm not investigating Delphi, Indiana. Abby and Libby deserve justice and Richard Allen does too, because I can confidently tell you Richard Allen didn't do it. We don't know if BK did, but we're going to get to the bottom of if he did. And also, we would like to know, how come we haven't heard a single search effort for the knife? Hmm. Some of you know I put up a little reward offering for information that leads to the knife. You just got to leave the coordinates down in my comments section. Have there been any search parties, search teams? Does anybody want to go to Moscow, Idaho and drive around and look for the knife with me? Maybe we can find it on the side of the road because maybe the perpetrator just tossed it out of his window when he was leaving. Maybe it's in a drain pipe that leads to a tunnel. Have any of these basic locations been investigated? How about this pond right here? I do have a snorkel set and I'm willing to buy you one too if you want to come with me. Let's do this. Let's find the knife together. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.